Okay. Hi, Tom Hazard here from WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. And today I'm going to share with you a new product that we just bought to use for our, our own purposes, but also to review for the podcast. And it is a 3D scanner from Matterin Form, their 3D scanner. It's been out for a while. This is not a new product, but as we had a need to actually scan something physical that was really hard to model, we researched and found there were very few products out there at the desktop level for scanning small 3D objects. So we bought this one and we're going to go through it together. Haven't even opened it yet. So let's see what we got here. Some information in Ziploc right off the bat. Do's and don'ts, it looks like. Do's and don'ts of 3D scanning. So it looks like a tip sheet of some kind here. We'll scan that and put it on uh, 3dstarpoint.com in the blog post. But it looks like it gives you the don'ts and then the do's of 3D scanning. And it says, do set the scanner up as instructed. Okay. Do scan in a bright, evenly lit room, so lighting is important, and do calibrate the scanner whenever it's been moved. So, And then do ensure the scanner latches down at a 90 degree angle. Secure wobbly rolling objects to the turntable with tape or um, you know, clay or custom mounts. And do plug into the USB port of your computer. If the scanner stays disconnected, turn the scanner on and off. Okay, there you go. And then the don'ts, let's just go through that here quick. The don'ts are don't scan with the camera facing excessively bright or reflective background areas like windows or mirrors or computer screens. Don't light the object in a way that creates a shadow. You don't want a shadow. And don't scan in a dark or dimly lit room. Also, don't move or touch the object when you're scanning. And when powering on, when powdering or spraying an object, don't do it when it's on the turntable. Oh, I guess I've heard of powdering. We did an episode a long time ago with the UPS store, and they were using a desktop scanner. And they found using actually a foot powder of some kind actually worked for them. So there's an important product information, little supplemental document, check that out later, and a general little booklet here that's telling you to download the latest software, of course and about plugging it in and it looks really this this booklet reminds me of an IKEA booklet because it's all in pictograms there's no actual written words of any kind so they've done this for multi-language telling you about opening up the machine and plugging it in to power and plugging it into USB so alright so let's see what we got here Looks like this is the scanner itself. It's wrapped in a black sort of fabric type material to protect it, I guess. And then it's wrapped within plastic, of course. And so it's a pretty compact unit when it comes, you know, it's folded up out of the box, it says matter and form on the outside and has a USB and a power connector down here at the bottom. All right. And then also inside the card appears to be some sort of a calibration card. to go through the instructions and look at that but it has black and white checks on it 
probably for calibration and, and maybe white balance. And then uh, they've given you a little object, <laughs> I guess, to scan. A uh, standard little object looks like a toy frog. Small little rubbery molded frog. My kids will probably be interested in that. Then we've got a USB cord. Some other plastic part. Black plastic part. I'm not sure what that is. And then this, what I'm sure is going to be the power cord. And it looks like the power cord comes with many different international adapters, which really just makes it easier for them to manufacture one product instead of a different version for the US, a different version for the UK, or, you know, different countries that have different kinds of power. And so I was able to snap in the little US plug right here. So we'll be able to plug that in. Don't need the rest of those. I'm going to move, I guess, just fold up the box there. And then see about <clears throat> following those basic instructions. So it looks like, yep, we've got all the parts. I will download the software with the video off so it's not to waste your time. But what it looks like is you actually put this upright. It's saying to plug in the USB and the power, and then to unfold the unit. So we'll at least get, get that plugged in, get that plugged in, and then we'll see about, so there's a button here on the top of the unit. It's a rectangular button. You push that and out comes the unit. Now, interestingly, ah, and then, okay, this is important. So when you open it, you push this button and then this top part of the unit flips down as a foot. So that now is flat. And it looks like there is some packing material inside of here that just helps keep everything in place when you travel. So it looks like here's the turntable and then we have the sensors that are going to read the dimensions of the part and there's a screw here for it to move up and down. So what I expect is going to happen is when I scan a part it will turn the turntable and then also this uh, this section here will rise up slowly as it turns to continue to read an object. And the first object I'm going to scan is pretty small, so it may not be able to rise that much, but it looks like you could do, you know, at least a six, maybe seven inch uh, tall, or 150, 175 millimeter tall object, and maybe a diameter of about six inches or 150 millimeters. So uh, I'm going to turn off this video and download the software, plug it in, then get it going and do a scan.